everybody. Welcome to another edition of Wednesday here on Chrono Speakeasy. I'm Paul, joined with Angela. Hi. Jay. What's up? Will. Howdy ho. And our good friend Rob. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was kind of soulful, I thought. Yeah, you know, I, was trying I thought to, it was suave. I was trying to be sexy, I guess I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It was the long pause beforehand that disturbed me, to be honest. Well, you know, can't knock me for trying. <laughs> <laughs> Could have done one of those lower lip bite things that those attractive people do and whatnot. I hear that work. I hear those play really well on audio. <laughs> I think it does. It works for G Dragon. <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. So we've got a pretty exciting week of. Shit. Bless you. <laughs> no, we're good. Uh, dog chewing my phone charger. Wow. Um, oh shit. Yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Sorry. <No. laughs> <laughs> um, big news this week. Uh, one I'm really uh, personally excited about is um, this rumor going around uh, that there's going to be a shakeup in the Marvel Netflix series. The original plan was we were going to have uh, Daredevil. Uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist, and now it's looking like Iron Fist may actually be a Netflix film and not a series. Which I think is cool, but I'm also kind of bummed out. Because I think, I haven't, have any of you watched that movie with Idris Elba that Netflix just released recently? No. Not yet. Because I hear it's amazing, and I hear it's their first, like, feature film that they released, and is it not good no i hear it's great i haven't watched it yet so i can't really add anything to that yeah but um i just loved daredevil and that it was long and could tell a long story whereas i feel like if the movie even if it's really good it's still only going to be like 90 minutes <laughs> right well i was trying to think if maybe if it was like a budget thing because i think of all the characters his origin really kind of takes place in a mystical setting yeah, you know what I mean? Like Hell's he, Kitchen. He, uh, yeah, I mean he's what he's in a floating city that appears once every five years, and I just it, hope that old Asian lady shows up again. I fucking love her. I think she will. I mean, I mean, she kind of. I mean, there's that throwaway. The shit. There's that throwaway line in Daredevil where she, where she was like, "I'm going back home," and it's like it's it's far from here. I don't know. Well, I was actually seeing some news last week that they were having a really hard time writing the show. They were just having trouble adapting Iron Fist to be a series. So my guess is that since they were having so much trouble, rather than put out something shitty, they just create what story they could, and they probably only had enough for a movie and not a 13-hour series. And, and you know what? That's fine, because I, I would rather have a short, concise, great story versus like a mediocre 12-part miniseries. Yeah, you know? no, absolutely. That's I um, guess whatever makes the content better is really... Right. I mean, because and hopefully, though, you know, when they and this is my dream, you know, once we get Luke Cage and Iron Fist together in the same screen, it, I would love a Heroes for Hire Netflix series. It wouldn't be a bad yeah. setup for it if they just do the backstory and stuff like that for Iron Fist as a film. I mean, think about it. I mean, like, I mean, the dude's going to fucking punch a dragon, you know, <laughs> like it, it may, maybe the budget was like, well, OK, it's it's either a 12 part series or a fucking dragon. It's like, oh, shit, we need a dragon. Like, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> uh, you know, there, 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 um, there, there, there may have been a lot of um, factors involved, including what Will had said about just having trouble making it fit you know I, I mean and who knows maybe by the time they got to iron fist they're like shit well we already told that story in daredevil we're already telling the story in luke cage so it, maybe they were feeling it was maybe a little repetitive yeah maybe they just wanted to get out of the uh the city for a while and i mean i guess they could have done it with a tv show too but still just yeah like you were saying just differentiate the origin and the fact that they're replacing it with a punisher series either tells me that they're Either they either had one in the pipeline because they do that, they just have a plan for forever, or right. or they're so happy with Punisher so far that they decided to give him his own series already, which is also great. That could be cool. I've got such a good feeling about John Bernthal as an actor in that mm. part. So I I am really I'm pumped. I mean, I I think as long as we have Iron Fist in some shape or form, I'm gonna be happy. 
Yeah. I mean, I think that Punisher should be a TV series anyway, just because he's a that type of character. Yeah, yeah you could totally serialize. Film. Like Punisher, I feel like should be serialized versus in a movie, because it's just like each episode is just a mission or like a story arc is him trying to take down someone or something like that. Whereas Iron Fist lends himself, I guess, better cinematically, like on a grand scale, because like you said, he punches a dragon. Right. Whereas I feel like maybe that's why all the Punisher movies in the past haven't been great. Well, I feel that he's a character that is constantly like evolving, and you and you really need like time to kind of flush him out, and mm-hmm. you know, to figure out why he is the way that he is. And um, yeah, so a series is perfect for him. Because yeah, like in the movies, there's War Zone, which is the most recent one, which is just basically a ridiculous B movie where he just blows people up all the time. Yeah, you mean and awesome B movie. <laughs> I like it. I'm not gonna. I, I thought it was the inter- grenade launcher with someone doing like a McTwist over between buildings. <laughs> <That's ridiculous. laughs> that was ridiculously awesome. And then um, the one with John Travolta and what's his name? Oh, the Russian. Uh, no, oh, the, oh, Tom Jane. Tom Jane. The Russian was played by Kevin Nash. <laughs> I just like it. I I just love the idea of like Travolta being in a comic book movie, just doing anything. <laughs> I just I, I I don't know why. I I just it, it puts a smile on my face. Um, and I I just can't help but being him be like, oh my god, you're the publisher. <laughs> <laughs> after after Planet Earth, he really didn't have that many options left. You mean Battlefield Earth? <laughs> Battlefield Earth. Can yeah, you imagine that- if John Travolta narrated? Planet Earth instead of like Sigourney Weaver and David Attenborough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think that it would be awesome for the Punisher TV series so that way people that have been buying the merchandise for years will have more of a know of where the <laughs> skull actually came from. It's true. All the... Oh, wow, my, Bro, brain, the my brain just turned off. <laughs> skull sweet. Can't wait to get ripped in it. It's true. I was just all the dudes at the gym football players and stuff there's like yeah punisher there's like i've seen dudes that have like iron cutouts of the punisher skull on their trucks and stuff and i'm just like i don't think you get that character that's kind of fucked up <laughs> yeah <laughs> unless they're yeah. his it wife would be hilarious if it was just like the punisher skull and then uh peace not war or something like that <laughs> yeah uh, whole foods <laughs> I, I would like I would like a Punisher skull that had like a pink Hello Kitty like bow on the top. I Ooh. guarantee you that exists. Ooh. Yeah, probably. Or just a like Hello Kitty in the Punisher outfit. That's got to happen. Oh yeah, or that yeah. must already have happened. It, um, well, Anime Boston's coming up in a few months. I mean, someone can make it happen. Yeah, that's we can true. make it happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so all, all it exists. So, it exists. Yeah. I found it. It exists. It looks surprisingly good too. Just Google Hello Kitty Punisher and you won't be disappointed, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we think of that Preacher trailer that recently came out from AMC? I literally just watched it 10 minutes ago and I think it looks awesome. I am really excited. I really am. I'm trying not to let myself get excited, but the hope is strong. It looks it's- really good. And I love that they use that actor. Um, what was from that? That UK- Dominic Cooper. Yeah, from that, U- that UK superhero show. What was that? Um, Misfits? Misfits, yeah. Misfits he, was really good. Misfits was awesome. He's I also love- Howard Stark. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I, wow, yes. I didn't even realize I, I, that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. But he's he's young Howard Stark, right? Like yep. yeah. yeah. He's he's in Captain America the first Avenger and Agent Carter. Carter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he does a good Agent southern Carter. accent. Yeah, I just I love the look of the show. It looks very similar to how Breaking Bad was shot. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. But I loved how Breaking Bad looked. <laughs> it's a yeah. good looking show. As someone who knows nothing about Preacher, or sorry, so the only thing I feel like I know about Preacher is that it's way more supernatural than this trailer let on. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Very much so. And that character that that uh, British dude is playing is, I believe, a vampire. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah. So the, I mean, the trailer. It seemed like your kind of general amp up. Let's just tease the tiniest bit trailer. So I'll, I'm looking for the full trailer, and I'll probably have a better opinion then. But I'm excited. I think it's a great start. Um, this has been taking years to get off the ground. Too, yeah, it has gone way. through so many different stages. This and Why the Last Man. I'm surprised it's something that's finally coming with it. Because is, um, so is Seth Rogen writing it? I believe him and Evan Goldberg is that his writing partner's name? Yeah, that's I believe writing. they're either writing it or sh- 
heavily involved producing it and stuff because they've been working on like just the preacher in some way for a while. Okay. I'm still waiting for a good fables, but like none of this once upon a time bullshit. I'm looking for fables, fables. would be really cool. That would be so good. It would would I, you play the game for it? Wolf Among Us? No, I haven't played the game. It's uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. You can get it on PlayStation 3 if you have it. And it, it's on a PC on Steam. It's really a lot of fun. Because you get to choose like where the story goes and stuff like that based on like your decision as different outcomes. <laughs> well, you, know what, um, you know what I was going to say, too, uh, in regards to that Preacher trailer, and um, like uh, I will mention how Dominic Cooper, he's the young Tony Stark. There's also another Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, actress in there. Yes. Um, I'm kind of afraid to say her name, if I might say it wrong. Um, was it Ruth? Nega. Nega. Oh, Raina. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's in it. She was, there's, a, there's a bit of her like getting like attacked in like a car. Uh, looks like she's playing Tulip. Which is funny because on Ages of Shield, she was the woman in the the flower dress, right? Yeah, is Tulip yeah, but... like a nice character who doesn't manipulate everyone and murder people? <laughs> Maybe that's why she likes flowers on her dress. I was gonna so say much. if she's a character in Preacher, probably not. <laughs> no. But um, I just I have so much faith in AMC at this point, just for producing a quality like television show. I'm not a huge fan of The Walking Dead, but. I respect it on like a production value aspect. Like that's a like it looks awesome. Like they didn't hold back making it look like a good show. That's like my main thing with all these CW and CBS superhero shows. They just look too. They look too campy, even if the subject matter is. They just like have this weird like sheen to them. No, I I know it. It's like gimmicky. Yeah, and it just you can. It's just so green screen heavy, and like. I don't know. Something about something about the like basic cable look that always throws me off. Whereas AMC just looks just looks sweet. Breaking Bad, Mad Men, they all they just they just look good. <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah, I think I, yeah. There's just something about AMC in their production value where yeah, it it looks you know what it is? It, it it just looks a little too clean. It, it doesn't really feel real. It doesn't kind of have that aesthetic groundedness that like. Breaking Bad hat or like The Walking Dead, where it felt like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. It just it just felt weird. Um, I mean, and 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 over a period of time, I, I kind of got was able to 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 get past it. But I, I know exactly what you're saying, though. Yeah, I think it's um, just shooting shows on location. In my just when I watch shows, it just makes such a difference than like telling that they're just on a set the whole time, right? Yeah. Well, it just looks so much better because you get natural lighting and things like that. Yeah, and it just, yeah. just for me, I don't know. That's why there's something about all like mainstream shows like that. I can never like, like I've tried to watch Agents of Shield, and that's different because that they do have a bigger budget. And they're not always just in a little studio set, but there's just something about the the glossiness of it. No, I agree. I agree. Um, now, Will, you had also posted a new story about. Um, they may there. There's talks that 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 they get uh, a Batman villain lined up for that possible solo film starring Ben Affleck. Yeah, so um, it seems like they're continuing with the trend of um, pushing the under the Red Hood storyline for Batman lately. So uh, they just released the Under the Red Hood animated movie a couple of years ago. Um, and then Batman Arkham Knight lends a lot from that type of storyline. So it seems like they're, that's the rumor that people are getting, especially with the big hint in the Batman vs. Superman trailer of the damaged Robin costume. But now that they're moving forward with the process and Ben Affleck is actually sitting down to direct it, that seems to be heavily what they're uh, leaning towards or being pushed towards maybe because it's... Of the more modern Batman stories that have a connection, like through the past, I feel like it is one of the stronger ones. I I I I always thought the the Red Hood story would make a great movie because I mean, especially if if they just have Red Hood be the main villain, don't don't have him like Red Red Hood and fucking Egghead or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, the just Spider Man Three it, problem. Right, just keep, keep it, it condensed. The what? The Spider-Man Three problem of having uh, a billion uh, videos. Or when was videos. there a Spider-Man Three? 
Um, exactly, Jay. Exactly. The year was 1964. I think it came out the same year as the Avatar The Last Airbender movie. Don't get me started. Which on was that. never. Oh, yeah, I don't. What, was that on Nickelodeon? Did I miss a special? They no. actually. Oh, no. Legend of Korra had an animated movie, right? No. They had a special. I don't think so. Oh, they had oh. a TV special. They would do finales and combine episodes like 11 and 12 together. Ah, stuff like that. One of those. But. So the Red Hood, it is a great story, and it could also be a Joker movie, but without ever really having the Joker in it, because yeah. it's just kind of all flashbacks while you're still figuring out the Red Hood stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but I gotta say, if they do go that route, I would. He might be too old, but I would love to see Jensen Ackles play the Red Hood because he did a really great job voicing it in the animated movie, and he even uh, looks he the part. Well, you know, I'm hoping I'm hoping some, you know, not another like bullshit conspiracy theory comes spinning out of it. Like, oh, well, it's, it's actually the Red Hood is really the Joker who's really Robin for The Dark Knight Rises. Who's, who's really, really Peter, like Parker, Batman Spider-Man. Beyond. Who's really Alicia Silverstone from <laughs> Batman and Forever, whatever movie. <laughs> Didn't they do uh, like... like Joker is Robin thing in Batman Beyond. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, it was like so, it, was like a, it was a downloaded consciousness. So well, it was he, like it was Tim himself. Yeah, it was Tim Drake who had been kidnapped at some point and implanted in him, and then basically Joker's psyche lay dormant for decades until it came out in the era of Batman Beyond. Also, can I say? That sequence in the Batman Beyond movie was pretty brutal. Like you know, when he turns like, into the Joker. Well, when they when they find little Robin strapped on the table, and he's like all white and the, that permanent grin, and the, and the way they drew his vein, like it was just like bulging out. Like it doesn't is it, like I'm trying to remember. Did Batman kill the Joker in that sequence? Because that was like that was the final Batman actual Joker encounter. I remember that being implied in that 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 was like the final. I, I don't know if they ever showed you in a way that could confirm it, but I'm guessing it was heavily implied. I don't remember well enough to say. Yeah. I haven't seen it in like watch- 13 years. I, say, I, I haven't remember- seen it in like 10 years either. Well, I watched it recently, maybe about like four years ago when I when I was going through like my Bruce Tim phase. And I was watching, and I was like, Jesus, I don't remember it being this intense when I first saw it. But it was like brutal, I thought. And that man beyond... Batman Beyond was pretty brutal, and it was great. The splicers, mm-hmm. Ugh, that was terrible. Batman Beyond needs to be be made into a movie, and I want That'd fucking awesome. I want old Michael Keaton as old Bruce Wayne. I'm yes. just saying. Yes, yes, that would be That's amazing. All I want out of life. It's all I want out of life. <laughs> or Clint well, Eastwood, that. like. 15 years ago. No, Clint Eastwood now. I want 90 year old Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> He's like. Go ahead. <laughs> it's like, what was that, Bruce? He's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like, uh, I understand with all those bullets falling out of your mouth. <laughs> He's like, they blinded me in the '60s, filming all them, filming all them cowboy movies. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's how that's how I imagine Clint Eastwood talking. It's like a mouthful of bullets. <laughs> You know, like, and they just fall into a barrel, and it just starts like shooting at people. It's just always just like Mad Max, and they turn all the bullets are his teeth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, be beautiful. That would be beautiful. Um, can can I just yeah. say real quick that John DiMaggio did a great job as the Joker in the Red Hood, the animated movie. He yeah. did, and it was it. It just felt a little bit so. It was over him, the top. him, and him and Kevin Michael Richardson did great Jokers, but you just there's no topping Mark Hamill. No. I'm not saying he topped him or anything like. I'm just saying he did a good job. Yeah, like, and I feel nobody like nobody ever compares. Well, I guess everyone always compares them. <laughs> like we all acknowledge that Mark Hamill is the Joker. I feel like mm-hmm. eventually, though, if they, I feel like they need to go a slightly different direction with the Joker for a while just to kind of like get people used to something different because I feel like if say they made like a death in the family movie or animated film that Joker I feel like someone else could voice him other than Mark Hamill because that Joker seems while still the Joker like so far removed from the like yeah yeah silly 
Jokerish Joker. Like, I feel like someone with a slightly more ground, not grounded because it's the Joker, but you know what I'm trying to say. Like, no, yeah, yeah, know, like Prettier. a scarier. I mean, yeah, because you approach. wouldn't want like the. I guess what you're trying to say is maybe you wouldn't want that hyper manic yeah. Joker. Yeah, like, at least for like that type of story. I well, and then that's kind of something I always appreciate about the Heath Ledger Joker because while he had his manic moments, like just the really like intense. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So Heath Ledger's Joker to me, personality wise, is perfect. I just wish I, I in the movie I like the makeup, but if they could have just taken Heath Ledger but given him maybe a more traditional Joker look. I think that would have been it would have been my perfect Joker almost. I was pretty cool with the look in yeah, general. I like I like the I look. I loved it. And they, I thought that it was so it made it so real and so sinister because that's who the Joker is, you know. Yeah, they also, and it made, and it did it like pretty quickly without really the build up. Just so that I, opening scene captures like the brilliance of the Joker and how he just doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> well, I think it worked too because, especially from a visual standpoint, where you have Batman who's like all in black, neat, orderly. It's like a uniform. Whereas Joker, he just fucking slapped that shit on his face. You can see some remnants of the white makeup on his collar. Like oh, yeah. he's just like it's it's it's, it's, it's a good visual yin to the yang. I he's thought for Nolan's person. universe. So, uh, l- just to clarify a little bit more, my main problem is that. Heath Ledger just and, and this is just hard for a physical actor to portray, but Heath Ledger wasn't pointy enough, if that makes sense. He didn't have the big like pointy nose, his oh like yeah. his chin kind of didn't come out. Like and I mean I understand that's hard, but when you go a little bit weirder with the with the makeup, you can do that with prosthetics. I mean, I loved it for Heath Ledger what they did. It I still think it's great. But the Joker has always been pointier than that in my head. Yeah, I, I think know that's what you're why I, I, that, that's why I always like Nicholson because I always thought Nicholson's Joker like, looked like he came out of like one of the '70s comic books because mm. mm. that was like that was like a neat Joker like because because like it wasn't makeup like his skin was actually like well in the story his skin was like bleached white dude like he do do like was like combing his hair back like mm-hmm. I don't know uh, but uh, this is this this may actually make for a great main topic someday though uh, doing like a Joker episode. Um, but speaking of, um, I guess, like franchises, uh, there was a story this week uh, where Sam Raimi, the director of the of the uh, first Spider-Man trilogy, had, had kind of acknowledged that he had messed up with Spider-Man 3 and that given the chance, he would take another crack at the Web Slinger. And uh, the question I wanted to bring to you guys and Angela was um, – does he, does he deserve it? Do we do? We, no. We, <laughs> no. Would you? No. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Especially yes. because he curtailed so hard to studio pressure in Spider-Man Three, which made it so terrible. And then I've already voiced my opinions a few times on the Amazing Spider-Man movies and how much you can just feel the studio notes being written down and making it into the movie. So Sam Raimi, he had his chance. He fucked up. I don't trust him to do it again because he he doesn't have the strength to stand up to the produ- the studio execs. I don't know he if did. that's the case because some people literally can't stand up to the studio execs. Like the studio well, can do whatever the hell they want. It's not like he I had mean, a final they, cut on the movie or anything. Yeah, like, I mean, they, I mean, look at I Fantastic mean, Four. They made that into like a shit piece didn't they yeah just because they were like come on you gotta make it like dark and gritty come on you can do it make it like the avengers and but like apparently they (laughs) shot a whole different fantastic four movie and they just um he didn't have the director josh josh trank is that his name Mm -hmm. he had like no input over the final cut of the movie they just took it away from him yeah, because he screwed up and he was going to cost him like four times as much money. Maybe not four, but like two times. But like Sam Raimi, say what you want. Spider-Man 1 and 2, awesome movies. They're great, but they're also they're also outdated at this I, I point think... for superhero movies. Spider-Man 2 is still great, but it is nowhere near my top 10 for superhero movies anymore. I think it's still in my top 10, and I think Sam Raimi still can direct the shit out of a movie if he's not making... Like, fucking Wizard of Oz or whatever the hell he made. Dude, like, I'm sorry, but Spider-Man 3 was so cataclysmic that it tarnished the first two for me. It did. 
And I I like Sam Raimi. I'm a huge Evil Dead fan. Like, I, I love the new show they're doing. Like, it's su- super fun. He's really good with camp. Like, I get it. But Spider-Man 3 was so bad. Do you understand how bad a movie has to be where I'm watching it and it immediately makes me think, how much money did they spend on this? There are people dying right now from hunger. And they spent all of this money on this piece of shit. Like, that takes a lot. And Spider-Man 3 did that. It pulled me out so far from the film, like, into reality, like, hard, like, terrible reality, (laughs) kids with flies on their faces. Like, I was so mad. At the end of that movie, some guy, like, started clapping because people do that in the theater. And I started yelling at him. (laughs) And I was like, it was just instinctual. Like, no, 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 you don't clap for that because that movie was so wrong here's i think a good example of of like just speaking to the effect of spider-man 3 um when i saw that i um just get it's just so tragic you know because i I went to the fucking midnight showing of this movie i was so excited and do you remember the scene when um was it like Peter Parker, I think he's dancing with Gwen Stacy, but Mary Jane is there. They have a tussle. Something happens, and Peter Parker elbows MJ in the face. Do you remember, do you remember that part? Mm-hmm. And, I think the, and I think the appropriate <laughs> response, the appropriate response should have been like, oh, not MJ. That's Peter Parker's love. People fucking laughed and clapped. They applauded for a woman getting elbowed in the face because I think the, the 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 shared rationale was somebody needs to get fucking punched in the face for making this movie it may as well have been Mary Jane <laughs> like I mean th- this is like I mean the way the title that's what like domestic abuse people were like yeah punch that bitch like it was just like insane like how like because cause, like everybody was so upset about that movie you know what killed me Spider-Man 3 if you think about it it's really another comic book movie called the mask (laughs) peter parker finds this alien thing puts it on oh suddenly i'm a new person and i can dance and i go out late at night and wear my hair weird and and what was that scene where mary jane and uh uh, osborne there they have that whole montage of cooking breakfast and they're doing the twist dude okay okay so can i just say something real quick can i (sighs) I, I just, I I just want to say this one thing, just this one uh, okay, thing. Okay. That movie was so bad and it made it took me to such a dark place and rage that I actually didn't like who I was after I had watched it. I didn't like who I was in the, as like a person. Like I couldn't look at myself in the mirror because I was so angry. That like that's insane. That's insane. But it really happened. OK, sorry, Jay. Okay, so I never saw Spider-Man 3, so I don't have that tainted, like, Spider-Man whatever that you guys clearly have. So, in my mind, Spider-Man 1 and 2, still solid movies. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and I really like Doc Ock in number 2. He did a great job. Ah, goddammit. And... uh, I love the fact that it's not, oh, this is going to destroy the world. I can't wait to kill everyone. It's just like, no, I want to do my experiment and prove that I am the genius that like I see myself as. Mm-hmm. And then he realized he made a mistake, wanted to do the right thing, blah, blah, blah. They they did a good job with that. And the like super comic booky ending to that also where like uh, James Franco just throws the – glass of whiskey at the mirror because he's like having a mental breakdown and then finds his father's lab. I thought that was really cool. I think too. It's awesome. I love it. Well, <laughs> so my reasoning for Spider-Man three being the reason that Sam Raimi can't make another Spider-Man movie is because, so we know that the studio execs pushed on him to include Venom mm-hmm. and that's readily apparent by how terrible it is in the script. Right. The entire other half of the story, where they somehow take Sandman and turn him into Uncle Ben's killer, that was, that was Sam Raimi's original script. That was his story. 
I didn't like that Mufasa ending where he was like, like Peter's like, I forgive you, and then he fucking fades into a cloud or some bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so it was, and so just the idea that Sandman killed Uncle Ben is just stupid, and I hate it, which might be a bit polarizing, but I kind of don't care. Um, and and so like just the entire movie was terrible, and no part of it that Sam Raimi did there made it better. So I, I just I just looked up the budget. Two hundred and fifty million dollars. And how much did it make? Two hundred and fifty million. I don't give a fuck how much it made. It was two hundred and fifty million dollars that it could have gone somewhere else. That wasn't that. Don't that forget. Money, oh. Don't forget the probable fifty million in marketing. Yeah. Do you know what's even You're, worse? Look at the budget of Transformers because everything uh, past the first Transformers is a goddamn nightmare. Like, here, here's here's my, here's my final takeaway from the whole Sam Raimi situation because I um, agree with Rob and Will that I really loved Spider Man and I adored Spider Man Two because I really thought that it got to the heart of Peter Parker and I liked that it asked the question, what would Peter's life be like if he wasn't Spider Man? Could he be happier, you know, without the mask? And and I thought that it really kind of Shut the character down, got to who Peter was and his, and his desire and, and, and how the real world affected him. And, and I, I loved it. I, I thought it was a really uh, well-written piece. And I think because, because I loved 1 and 2, that's why I felt so robbed and hurt by part 3. Because I felt like I, I had gained trust with Sam Raimi. Because after Spider Man Two, I was like, I can't fucking wait for Spider Man Three. When I heard about like Sam Man and Venom, I'm like, ah, oh, that sounds weird. But Sam's got this. He's got this, and he didn't. And it was like just, it was terrible. Like it, 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 it felt like betrayal. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure. Me, you know that you know. I appreciate that he says that he's. Me- that he's messed up, but I just, I just, I'm very hesitant to see him back at the helm of a project like that. Dollars on a mess up. The thing is, already- the budget and all that stuff that has nothing to do with Sam Raimi. That was Sony, just literally throwing money and having bad ideas. The scene of Doc Ock in the hospital in Spider Man Two. Superhero movies need more of that, because that scene is incredible. <laughs> the wall fight scene when he just yeah like he messes up all those people and you just see the silhouettes and it's essentially a horror film scene but just in a spider-man movie yeah but what's it so sam raimi but what did spider-man 3 have i mean it it didn't have any shade of sam raimi it was like he took a nap and somebody else directed for him like he was was, honestly probably pissed because they forced him to put a character he didn't like in the movie and i don't blame him Right, but uh, there's still like I, I I I didn't I didn't I just I just didn't see t- Rami's trademark anything anywhere in that movie. You know, like I mean, I, I get what you're saying because I like how, you know, both Spider-Man movies had scenes that made me jump, which I thought was cool because you know he's he's got his foundation in horror, but it didn't even feel like a Sam Raimi film. Like I was hoping that that that, that you know that there would have been something somewhere it's that kind of he- clued me in that he was still there. It's because he didn't like Rob said he didn't care. So since he didn't care, he didn't put any he his movie was taken away from him. So he just did what he needed to to get the job done. And after so I th- I feel like it's hard to keep a director around for more than two movies. You really have to have someone else like Kevin Feige as the showrunner per se and keep mm-hmm. all that in line. But then cuz I just to actually direct that many movies, it's going to burn you out. And how Kevin Feige is still a producer without dying, I'm not <laughs> sure. Maybe he's a life auto decoy. Well, I think Feige is the chosen one. Also, I feel like they should just he's space. They should just space out movies. Do you know what's a good three movies? The Indiana Jones movies. They were made over what, like, fifteen years or something like that. Like, if Sam Raimi made a movie once every five years, they probably would have been good Spider-Man movies. But now they're just like, you're going to direct seven superhero movies, you're going to direct one every two months. Um, and you will have two bowel <laughs> movements. That's all you're allowed to have. Exactly. Here's $250 million, just get it done. <laughs> and also, you need to have this, 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 and this character in it. <laughs> Do you know what kids like? Kids like Venom. Also, okay, can we talk about the, the fact no. that fucking Topher Grace got cast? Yeah, as Eddie Brock. You mean Eric Foreman? <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah, 
I okay, so I did see like one scene of that movie where he had like those shitty fake teeth in his mouth as he had the venom suit on. <laughs> and he just kind of talked like this. Yeah, because the face just like comes off, and then you see his shitty face like yeah. in on this like body. <laughs> also, I thought it was weird that Peter was the only one who could crack the whole Photoshop thing that he was doing like these pictures are photoshopped and i was like what i can't believe this like what kind of fucking newspaper is this what is this adobe the thing <laughs> i'm adobe for missing this <laughs> but like in the comic books eddie brock was always like a big dude like he could have beat the shit out of like peter parker like if you look at him he was always like a foot taller and huge and then Topher grace is smaller <laughs> like he wasn't an intimidating presence to begin with they totally could have gotten Batista or like Brock Lesnar. But now we have Batista already in a movie and he was great. So yeah. it all worked out. I saw some great fan art online the other day of if okay, Spider no Gwen. Sentence should start that way, <laughs> just to clarify. I saw some great fan art the other day. That, that, like, I, what? I saw a great car ride that was just beautiful. Sorry, let me, let me rephrase. I saw a great concept the other day <laughs> of. Spider Gwen, if Spider Gwen had been infected by the Venom symbiote and like the oh. teeth were around the hood, and it, about Gwenum. And it looks sick. That's cool. Um, speaking of uh, female costumes, uh, there's also that news story this week about uh, apparently D- Disney is they're kind of um, they're they're getting rid of Slave Leia. I know um, posting on Facebook. Um, Artist J. Scott Campbell of Danger Girl actually built a career in drawing sexy girls. Um, he had released a quote saying that like um, that Disney's already well on its way to wiping out the slave outfit from any future products, period. You will not see any future merchandising featuring the slave outfit ever again. Trust me, I've heard it from two sources. We can't even draw Leia in a sexy pose at Marvel, let alone in that outfit. So, so that doesn't stop cosplayers from looking sexy in that outfit. Right. So, wrong. <laughs> my one of my favorite things that's kind of come out of this that's brought a lot of attention to it. So I, I agree with Disney because I think that it's it's not a correct description of Leia in the scene. And yeah, so sometimes like you have like um Stormtrooper outfit, other main characters, but there was another podcast out there that did, I think it's Big Shiny Robot, and they just made a petition to say, okay, so instead of Slave Leia, let's just call her Leia the Hut Slayer, which sounds awesome. It is so yes. accurate. Because she choked out the fucking crime lord of the galaxy with a chain. Jeez, and, and no looked, one talked about it. Much of a fight. He kind of just like wiggled. He was just like, eh. Hey man, he He's put on fat. a lot of weight, all right. <laughs> uh, that that's what the huts are though in general. I mean, at least in the cartoon series, all those <laughs> that species of alien that are just disgusting fat monsters. You know. But it really <laughs> it's it it is something that it's like, okay, so it's been going on for thirty years. What's the change now? So Disney is more family friendly and I just think that it's it's the right it's the right call for the character because there was a for the Lego Star Wars video game. The cover is like Obi-Wan, Han, Luke, all in like their traditional clothing. And then it's like Leia with a blaster, a Lego Leia with the slave bikini on with a blaster like winking at you. And it's really disturbing. And I don't get how in cosplay I can get it, but I don't think that in major marketing materials and merchandising that that's the way that Princess Leia should, that's not the one Princess Leia that people should be remembering most often. I always like... She's, she's so much more. I like the Empire Strikes Back Leia where she's basically in like Arctic clothing. <laughs> and that's actually, how she's been dressed in all the comic books. I caught up on a, what is it, Shattered Empire this week and they basically mm-hmm. just have her as like a badass pilot again. Which I think is totally the approach, like you said. They're like just trying to re-image her as just the strong, not just Disney princess. In the well, I guess all the Disney princesses are strong characters, but they're, you know, they're trying to just make her not seen as slave Leia. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she, it's, she's more. I mean, 
I think it's definitely, um, and I was saying this earlier, it's more, I think a lot of it has to do with the language um, about how we talk about her and how they want that character spoken about. Um, and I mean, the slave Leia look isn't her most iconic look. I mean, the the cinnamon roll like headpiece was pretty, pretty like iconic. And she was badass in that. And she's such a badass character. And it was something that even when the um, first uh, like the the shitty like episode one, two and three, when they were talking about like uh, Natalie Portman, it's like, oh, how could that be like Leia's mom? Because she's so like. Wah. Mm-hmm. You know, like how I mean, because Leia was such a badass. So the idea of just changing um, like how we view like how it, it, it they're thinking about like younger girls looking up and seeing like how we're going to view Leia in the future. Are we going to see her as just this like little sex kitten in like a, a chainmail bikini or are we going to see her as a badass in a chainmail bikini? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, not chain mail, but you know what I mean. Metal bikini. And in reading stuff around this, I actually went back and found the 1983 Rolling Stone interview with uh, Carrie Fisher, where they it was actually like they actually did a bunch of pictures in the bikini. Um, and they interviewed her. And some of the things that she said, I might not get these quotes exactly right. Um she said that back in those days, women characters didn't have, female characters didn't have the same level of attention that the male characters got. So one of the ways that they would make a female character stronger was they would just make her angrier, which they did in episode four and episode five. She was a really kind of standoffish, brute character. But then in episode five, you start getting the the she's the love interest of Han, and they start developing that. And then in episode six, they kind of. They, they just kind of go full steam into that because they can and that's what they know. And we end up with things like the Slave Leia bikini to because now she's feminine in a different way instead of just being an angry, strong female character. Well, wasn't she also only in that slave outfit for like, what, 15 minutes? Some shit like that? Probably less than that. Of screen time, probably less. Yeah, it's just literally the beginning of the movie until they get off of... Uh... They're on so tattooing I, at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I mean, I saw her one woman show that she did a few years back when I was in Boston. And I was like the youngest person there, went to a matinee. And she went in depth about like what it was like portraying that character and, and being known for it. And it and, you know, and she brought out one of her like sex dolls on stage and it was pretty it was pretty entertaining but at the same time it was kind of depressing um because it was like one of i mean that first film was like one of her first like major gigs and so she felt so much pressure to like perform and she was kind of like down to do anything so by the time the um final film they did the final film she had a little bit more leeway and you know but she seemed she seemed more confident about it but that's just my my perspective and so the other thing that kind of I think explains what Carrie Fisher feels about it is that one of when when uh, I'm sorry who's playing Ray I forget the actress's name in uh, episode Daisy, seven Daisy something y- yeah so one of Carrie what? Fisher's first pieces of advice to to that That's actress right. was don't let them put the metal bikini on you and I feel like that says that says way too much about it and if anything you got to respect Carrie Fisher on this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, actually, I was I was I was gonna bring that up. Will that that yeah that that her advice to her was like yeah don't don't let them force you into something that you don't want to. Because I mean I hear a statement like that and that sounds like I hear a lot of regret in that. Like I should have fought hard and I should have should have fought more. Mm-hmm. I should have blasted the hell out of somebody. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean it's gonna be. I mean I. I, I okay. So the way I, I think about it in this situation is I imagine like a parent. You know, my parents. Good parents who are raising their kids in the way of the forest, and it's Halloween, and their daughter wants to be like, you know, Princess Leia, you know, and then like, you know, like, and and, and I've seen those bikini slave costumes out there, like, mm-hmm. so I mean, it's I, I can't imagine like, oh, I'm gonna buy my daughter a slave Leia costume for Halloween, like, that'd be weird. <laughs> yeah, like it's, I think it's, yeah, that's like dad. You want to be a slut so for Halloween, huh? Offers, like dads who are creeps. <laughs> Oh, and I like I I I and I'm I'm probably gonna you don't be want to start 
people dressing like that that early for Halloween. If your father's still buying your outfit for you, you don't want it to be... You you want more clothes than less. I'm just saying for Halloween, like I was saying, Princess Leia on Hoth, it's practical. You'll be warm out there trick-or-treating. You just... It's it's just a vest, some like a nice turtleneck, get some patches and a blaster. You're good to go. Some braids. <laughs> Next Halloween, a girl in Boca Raton, Florida, dies of heat stroke from wearing a, <laughs> a Princess Leia uh, hot outfit. All right, if you're in if you're in Miami or something, and it's hot. You can you can wear the bikini outfit. <laughs> That's just practical. Well, in New England, I have the choice because it's either going to be really cold or really hot. It is true. So I'm all <laughs> for the idea of them changing like the title, the title of it. And I'm going to reiterate Jay's point. Of, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Will's point about how you know you have the, such such a strong female character who again took down this this huge intergalactic boss with a with, with a chain, and all it's remember is re, is remembered is that oh, like this this the slave outfit. So I really like that they're that they're renaming it like you know the uh, Leia the Hut Slayer. Um, I don't know how I feel about them pulling all of the products though because I mean I, I feel like that kind of dabbles into like that or that earlier George Lucas thought of a world where we're gonna we're gonna change some scenes or when or when, or when Spielberg took the guns away from the FBI agents because he didn't like you know guns being aimed at oh, kids. Oh, gave him the walkie talkies. Yeah. So <laughs> well, so first off, it's not official that it's Leia the Hut Slayer. That's just a petition that some other websites have started because they feel that's more appropriate. Right. Um. But then as far as pulling it, so Disney isn't going to release a sexualized product of a single one of their characters. They're just not going to do it. Right. And well, thank and, goodness we have the internet to do that for us. And and it bums me out because one of the things that they were apparently working on was a, a statue. And I would have – so I would not have minded a, a Princess Leia statue, but mm. – I just think it's weird because they can I mean, still do a Princess Leia statue, but they so just, so so they'll get so anyone who does it from now, it won't be licensed by Disney. They'll be sued faster than you can imagine. Oh, okay. So it's not Disney doing the statue. It was just they were going to make a statue. Yeah, someone was licensing okay. to, to make a statue. I just think it's. <clears throat> Dick I mean. Disney. I mean, you know, you, you know, say say what you want about the outfit, whether whether you thought it should have been in the films or not. Regardless, it's in there, and I feel like I don't know. It just seems weird to not. I don't know. Is it just me that that, that finds it a little weird, okay. or we're not we're not going to make this? I mean, I mean, I get the point that you don't want to sexualize the characters, but like, but that's part of film history. It's still going to be there. They're not going to take it out of the movie. So like, no, 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 if, but, no, if George but Lucas touches those movies. One more time, or if anybody does, the world is gonna freak the hell out. Yeah. Okay. So, just, what if they did do the like touch the movie thing and like you know how they edited it so that the uh, whatever dickhead kid from episode three that played Anakin in it Hating was Christians. in the yeah w- whatever his name is I don't know I don't care. Um, <clears throat> they edited the movie so that he would be in it and so that they would show Palpatine's face and stuff like that. What if they just like put a turtleneck over Leia in those scenes? That would be kind of funny. That would be very funny. I'm not saying that wouldn't be funny, but I'm saying ah, that seems like a lot of work for someone to do. Uh, it's Disney. They got money out their ass. It's like in Thank You for Smoking when they replace all the cigarettes with like steaming cups of coffee. <laughs> uh, that'd be great. Yeah. But I think that... Um, I don't know. Uh, all the, uh, I guess, keeping all the Leia stuff on lockdown is kind of lame. But at the same time, getting rid of the whole slave Leia or just changing the name of it, uh, that's cool. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't. I think it's good that they're. I mean, not good. I don't care either way. It's still going to be in the movie. It's I nothing it. I guess. I, yeah, whatever. I mean, I agree. Little kids probably shouldn't be like, what's Slave Leia? <laughs> well, was it originally called Slave Leia by the industry, or was it like fans just were like, oh, that's Slave Leia? No, there was officially released like uh, figures, like mm-hmm. so action figures back in the 80s that were like Princess Leia slave costume or Slave Leia or some combination. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, she was technically put into slavery at that point and that is the outfit that the slaves wear right but that's but so yes i understand i i I understand yeah but so 
people will will always would love merchandising of that but i agree that disney does not have to provide that because i agree that that's i mean as a male and as a male who loves star wars i absolutely love that bikini but i agree that it's not something that especially being owned by disney should be merchandised yeah, and it's like, and yeah. it's, you know, I'm all for like, I, I mean, I'm definitely one of those people that thinks like, you know, we have to be a little careful with making things a little too PC, but like, if it's not hurting anybody, like, then what's the fucking problem? But I think the slave Leia image can be hurtful in the long term because as a, as a woman who grew up in the eighties and, you know, had those, those images in my head. I mean, it like women are, we're a little warped because of that. You know, I mean, there's, we, there's a lot of social pressures on us to be a certain way and to be, we have to be like super, super sexy, but still nice enough to bring home to mom. We can't be too intelligent. We can't, you know, but you know, it, it, it's just, there's so much like ridiculous shit. So it's like one less thing to like put a pressure on a young girl so to like be a sexual being it's like one less pressure it's like get rid of it it's like not that big of a deal i mean nobody's gonna uh, we still have the internet like nobody's gonna cry because you know Dis- it, i i want my shit trademarked by disney you know like it's stupid nobody fucking cares and if they do it's I- like they need to check their shit I think my parents would be happy with any woman I brought home to them as long as they're a real person. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it's like, you know, if, if guys like, I, I don't know. I think, I think that, that sometimes, uh, I mean, cause social justice warriors are like a pain in the ass. I get it. But, uh, the, some of the shit that they say is like ground in reality and it's not complete crap. You know, there's a reason for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't I don't really care. Do what you want, Disney. Just don't yeah. ruin the movie. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. don't let George Lucas touch it again. It's funny that they made up the whole like Jar Jar Binks is uh Kylo Ren, but please don't make that a real thing. <laughs> so no, did you read do that. that did you read that full fan theory? Because that guy put a lot of effort into was, it. Was was it as long as the Joker one that we talked about last week? Oh God! Yes. God, people have so much time to do stuff. How do you have so much time? Do people have jobs? <laughs> do, I don't. They, they just don't have to do anything at their jobs. Um, no, so it's on Reddit. The original fan theory. He like he goes and he grabs screen grabs. He grabs gifts. He I think he makes a couple gifts. He's like, look at this. This is a force rump. He compares uh, Jar Jar Binks' fighting style to drunken wushu. Oh like God. it's it's incredibly in depth. Screw that guy. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta wake my ass up at four thirty a.m. Drive to the big old city and do some work. I ain't got time I just, to talk I just, about I just, no Jar Jar. No <laughs> yeah, but I said no one's got time for that. But we do have time for what we've been reading this week. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> so and and not just what we've been reading, but just kind of sort of what's been kind of. I don't know. Yeah, what's been tickling our nerd fancy this week? Ooh. Will? <laughs> so I, uh, as far as what I'm reading this week, I've been diving back into my Marvel Unlimited thing, rereading some of the, um, I reread The Death of Ultimate Spider-Man because I, I really love the funeral scene where Aunt May and Steve Rogers have their interaction. Um it just really solidifies Ultimate Aunt May as really one of my favorite characters. Then this week I read the new Invincible Iron Man number three, Amazing Spider-Man number three, and I forget what the X-Men comic is, but it's like Extreme X-Men number one. I don't understand how they can pump, how Marvel can pump out three issues of Amazing Spider-Man and Invincible Iron Man in six weeks, but can't get a Secret Wars on time. <laughs> that I'm just going to leave alone. Um Amazing Spider-Man number three was great. Uh, it turns out that uh, we get Johnny Storm in this issue, and we get the Johnny Storm Spider-Man bromance, which is great. Um, I can't believe there's a third issue out. That's right? insane. When did the it's, second one come out? <laughs> two weeks yeah. ago. They've released one every two weeks. Okay, ama- I have found the problem Marvel has with getting books out on time. Just release it once a month instead of every goddamn day. Thank you. And the stuff will work out. <laughs> Thank you. Money. 
Yeah, Marvel's like, we got it. We got to release it. And someone's like, wait, shouldn't we just... Nope. You released that book. <laughs> can, can we wait for it? Nope. Nope. You're, you're thinking then, like a real pussy, Jim. <laughs> uh, Extreme X-Men number one was good, but it's still really setting everything up, so it hasn't... It, it's not great. Who's the but, team right now? Like... Um, I can't imagine that this check. is the main X book if they're calling it Extreme X Men. Extreme's always kind of like their C list. So team. It's, it's it's the one with it's got Storm. It's gonna have Old Man. According to the cover, it's got Storm, Old Man Logan, um, Jean Grey, Colossus, Magic, and Nightcrawler. Is this by Jeff Lemire? Jeff Lemire with uh, Humberto Ramos as the penciler. Oh, is this? It, this is that. Issue, yeah. Or, okay. This is I, that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a, that was a very space balls moment. Uh-huh. <laughs> a, ex, extraordinary X Men is is the title, not extreme. Okay, because I wanted to read this because I was reading some interviews with Jeff Lemire and it seemed interesting. So it seems like it's going to be good, but just the it's a first issue, so it's just kind of like okay. So we it's I think because it took till issue three for both Amazing Spider Man and Invincible Iron Man to get good for me, so I'm gonna give this one the same leeway. I thought Iron Man got good in the first issue. I thought that was out of that that week when all those came out. I thought that and Doctor Strange were definitely the. Oh, that's true. So maybe it's just Amazing Spider Man. Amazing Spider Man's been off to a slow start. Yeah, issue one of that. I I couldn't even finish it. <laughs> issue issue three is really good. Maybe I'll check it out, but I would also do it rather do it you did and reread Death of Ultimate Spider Man because that arc is heartbreaking and I love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> And then I've just been on my X Files binge. I'm somewhere in season two now, so I'm nice. probably maybe I'll be caught up by January. I have faith in you. As long as you can get to season five, you'll be good. Okay. Because the end of the show is. Eh. Yeah. Do I have to watch? Do I have to watch the movies? The first one's not bad. I liked the. First I did too. One. Yeah. And that, isn't, is 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 that between seasons five and six? I believe it is. Yeah, Fight the Future was good. I liked it. Mm-hmm. My parents took me to see it when I when I was in theaters, but I remember absolutely nothing besides the black goo. Mm. <laughs> well, it was like Venom. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Rob, what are you reading this week? Um. Well, like I said earlier, I Newberry Comics was having like a all Marvel comics or fifty percent off sale, like all of them, until Halloween. So I bought a bunch of like the Star Wars books that I hadn't read. So I caught up on Shattered Empire, um, just because I've been so into Star Wars that I just needed more. And I thought it was kind of cool. They're kind of explaining how at the end of Jedi, stuff didn't really just get resolved right away. There's still kind of a huge empire to be dealt with. And I thought that was cool. It kind of shows how like Han Solo is like a special ops general guy. And Princess Leia is still a badass. He's just like, no, I'll do it. I can fly. I'll fight off all these 10,000 like people in space and shit. <laughs> but no Luke though, right? <laughs> No, uh, no Luke so far. He was on the cover of the fourth issue that I think is coming out soon. I bet, I bet they're keeping any, anything but Luke post Return of the Jedi like really close to the chest. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only thing about Luke that I've read so far is um, a ship flew by, and someone's like, "Who are you?" And they're like, "It's Luke. Don't worry. Bye." Oh right. <laughs> and it's just yeah, like yeah. a word bubble. Um. But yeah. Which I was glad, I was glad they brought up because I wondered like when he left the Death Star in the Imperial ship like why is no one shooting that Yeah, I guess someone was going to, but he's like, no, it's cool. Don't worry, it's Luke. And like, oh, okay, yeah, it's, it's an old code, sir, but it checks out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and also, um, it came out a couple weeks ago, but we haven't had a chance to talk to it. Um, have any of you read the Twilight Children, Darwin Cook's new book from Vertigo? No, not yet. You guys got to read that because. First off, Darwin Cook is awesome, and yes. everything he does is awesome. And it's a Vertigo book, which I'm surprised those come out anymore because nothing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was shocked. I was like, Vertigo is releasing a new book, but it's super super good. The art's awesome. It's kind of like a mystery that takes place in uh, I'm not sure if it's like a Caribbean or like Mediterranean type setting, but everybody has olive skin, so. <laughs> It's hmm. something on the beach, but it's kind of like a sci-fi mystery, and the art's just gorgeous. So, I just want to keep reading it. Right on, cool, cool. Yeah, and there's been some other stuff, but I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Jay? Uh, what's 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 got your attention this week? His, um, his dog. Outside of my <laughs> weekly uh, 
like episodes of anime coming out, like Awari Monogatari and uh, stuff like that. I just started rewatching Oran High School Host Club again, uh, and oh my god, I love that show so much. They slip on bananas all the goddamn time, and it's so awesome. <laughs> and like rewatching it too, um, I noticed that the like main character Haruhi doesn't actually acknowledge herself as either being male or female, and it, she has a transgender father. And, like, all these awesome things that, like, I never picked up on in the past just because, like, oh, that just, that me- that makes sense. That's cool. Whatever. Um, and what else am I watching? Uh, Ace of Diamond. I'm reading more of A Centaur's Life because I, I don't <laughs> know, I'm, I'm human garbage. Um, uh, yeah, and I finally read fear itself instead of just the deadpool part of it which i thought it it was a cool story threw me off that uh captain america wielded mjolnir which was whatever but he's done it he's done it before it's weird they tease it in the movie he made made a wiggle it's always good when they wiggle (laughs) go ahead well it's mighty hammer i also forgot i read original sin and secret invasion finally Oh, what you and think? I liked I liked Original Sin because I liked The Watcher, so I, I enjoyed that. What do you think of Secret, Secret Wars? Or Secret, Secret Invasion? Invasion? Started off slow, got really good by the end. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I remember liking it. Yeah, I liked. I knew I was gonna like it when Brian Michael Bendis went before he was writing. Me. He's like, yeah, I've been watching The Thing on repeat to get inspiration. I'm like, oh, that's a good starting point. If you're watching The Thing over and over before writing a story. We're going to have a good time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, Jay, I'm sorry. Did you have anything else to add to what, what you've been watching and reading? Uh, basically just marathoning uh, like Halloween stuff and things like that to get in the mood for festivities. Cool. Angela? Um, I mean, I haven't been reading too much. I have a nice like pile of uh, gem like that I need to read. Um, and uh, Providence. Providence. Oh yeah, I've shit! Really, I have a huge stack of Providence too. I, that I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I waited because I'm gonna tackle those. But um, we've been watching a lot uh, more anime, and um, yeah, I just got Paul started on My Love Story, which is really nice, and that's such a great manga. And I love the anime so far. Um, they're just having a lot of fun with it, and yeah, we're. Getting started on the second season of Kimi Need to Do Okay. And um, they have a, like a lot of good anime up on like Hulu and stuff. So it's it's nice Ooh, to be able Hulu to Hulu really has a lot. Dive like, in, yeah. Uh it, it's really surprising how much like I think they have more than what Crunchyroll has. Really? <clears throat> yeah, I, well, I, I think know so. Crunchyroll's really good at like um streaming. <clears throat> like, They're what's... more up to date with things that are coming out, but yeah. uh Hulu has those too. Yeah. Like, um, uh, I know they're playing uh, uh, sh- the Chivalry of a Knight. They're up to date with that. Awari oh, cool. Monogatari. Um, something asterisk. Some bullshit. I forget the name of it. So it it is it is a lot of fun to get back into anime. Um, it's still a lot of crap to sift through, but just to get to the good stuff. But I so far. You know, finding little new things is, has been pretty delightful, and it's a fun process. So, yeah, that's basically what I've been up to. You, you guys know that you have someone that's watched over 500 different animes. Just throwing that out. Yeah, there. but you know, I, I, sometimes with UJ, and this is not like an insult in any way, shape, or form. It's not. Um, but sometimes it's like it's a hit. Or it's a complete mess. Because I know you've tried to show me a couple that I've just been like, I hate this. I, I'm not going to continue watching this. This is awful. I want to go to bed and or drink and or drink more wine. Um, but like, you know, pan, uh, Polar Bear Cafe, huge fucking hit. Like you, 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 you do. So you do have really, really good. What um, what was the miss that was just you know, terrible? Honestly, there have been Because I only remember showing you polar bear cafe nope there have been two and two in particular since i've known you 
And there are two in particular that I, honest to God, can't even remember the names of them because I wanted it far and gone out of my mind. But you were really into them, and I was just like, okay. Was Hunter Hunter one of them? No. It was Spider-Man 3. (laughs) Oh, okay. No, I don't. I I honestly don't remember because one of them in particular, I remember it was at um, my ex's house. And we were chilling in the living room, and you had this oh, right. on, and you guys were both just like, oh, this is so amazing. And I was like, I fucking hate this. <laughs> right. But, <you> know. <clears throat> I've matured since then. <laughs> so I'll do briefly what I've been reading this week. Um, <laughs> not uh, Budget is limiting me from being uh, caught up on current comics, so I decided to go digging through my pile. Um, and I'm going to reread... Um, all of the Daredevil stuff I have kind of actually, uh, I'm starting um, with the Kevin Smith, Joe Casada Daredevil, um, Guardian Devil. So I just started rereading that because I know that kind of goes into the Brian Michael Bennis and the Ed Brubaker run. Um, so I'm currently rereading that right now, and it's really interesting to read because there's it's a lot so, of words. There's a lot of words. <laughs> it's a lot of words, and there's just a lot of 90s throughout like i mean the joke of his art i mean i know he's big in the 90s so his art just like kind of oozes that 90s style and like kevin smith does like a lot of shout out to like other stuff like the fact that like he mentions about how like um matt murdoch has tickets to the fucking world premiere of goodwill hunting it's like (laughs) okay one why he's fucking blind (laughs) <laughs> why the fuck does he have those tickets like i get your boy ass like is is in that movie but like he produced it jesus <laughs> age christ like i just like i i, I don't know i hate i hate I don't know. I, I just, I know, it just, and maybe, and, and maybe like it just like it, it just personally, it's like, oh god, I'm so old. Like <laughs> Goodwill Hunting, like Jesus Christ. Um, and also, um, fuck it, I'm gonna do a spoiler. I think it's really weird that Deadpool. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, not Deadpool. Uh, Bullseye kills another Matt Murdock girlfriend. Like it's like Electra Part Two. And it's like, all right, we've kind of, although there was a genuine good twist at the end that I won't spoil. Um, but I think it's definitely, if you're a Daredevil fan, it's definitely worth a read, especially to get ready if you want to read the Brian Michael Bendis run. Yeah. I think it's solid. I think it, it it's but definitely not right, super wordy because it opens yeah. with like Karen Page writing a letter to Matt Murdock and it's a fucking letter. It's mm-hmm. like, oh my god! Like, if I was Matt Murdock, I'd be, I, I'd be like, you know, dude, you, 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 you lucked out. Like, yeah, this is a good thing you're gonna. Right. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But in the meantime, please read all of our content on <laughs> ChronosBeCasey.com. Yeah, and check out our YouTube page that I've been kind of throwing stuff up there on. At yeah, ChronosBeCasey the- on YouTube. <laughs> And uh, and and the and YouTube will also have the uh, the Tuesdays podcast hosted by our our very own Will Carey. Yes, that is also up there. Good plug, Will. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Sorry, my my computer is on the verge of dying, so I've just kind of been sitting here silently, so I don't get cut off unexpectedly. Oh, oh. <laughs> then now is the perfect time to wrap up. So again, yeah, as always, check us out on iTunes, Stitcher. And of course, chronosbeasy.com and Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. So, in the meantime, Will. Enjoy your issues.